Hi. Okay, <clears throat> so we are going to start with our notes here. Um, put your name on them and the date, and like like so. And then the topic today is going to be one point three. How scientists contributed, or you can just put scientists. Scientists' contributions. Okay, today um, the date is on the board. And our essential questions are these right here. Okay, so we don't need to write down the cheek, but we're going to research and evaluate the contributions of scientists, including Ptolemy, Copernicus, Tycho Brahe, Kepler, Galileo, and Newton, as astronomy progressed from a geocentric model to a heliocentric model. Okay, so the essential questions are, why did we change the model? We did not change it, but why did the model change? Okay, um, and what are the implications of moving from a geocentric model to a heliocentric model? Okay, so write that down and we will continue. Okay, so first up, we have Ptolemy. Okay. I'm hoping that this is helpful here. Ptolemy, he lived in the second century AD, so like year 100. Um, what I really want you guys to know about Ptolemy is that this was a really, really long time ago. Okay, I don't know a whole lot about history. Um, but this is like right after the turn of the millennia. He lived in Alexandria, Egypt. So like Roman Empire, if you've seen the movie Gladiator, this is, this is it. Julius Caesar, just to give you some context, was 44 BC. So not too much before um, Ptolemy. Okay. And his ideas lasted for almost 1500 years or 1300 years. Um, until the Middle Ages. He had a mathematically sound geocentric model that made sense. Sorry, I don't feel good. Um, we, oh. <clears throat> so he had this model here. We've looked at this before. It has these little loop-de-loop -loop, um, orbits, right? And it was really complicated. He didn't call them loop-de-loop -loop orbits. He called them epicycles. So, but he could explain it all with math. And it was embraced by the Catholic Church. And they were kind of, they were a big deal, right? Like they still are. But, you know, back then it was even more. So this is all we really need to have down. Okay. Ptolemy, when it was. And then, I don't know what that 47 AD is. You don't need that. Um, earth and center, he had the complex epicycles, looped orbits, and we know now that it was inaccurate, but he didn't know that. Okay. All right. Um, oops. Then here comes Copernicus. Copernicus is kind of awesome. He, y'all, the, the time between these two guys is a really long time. We're going from the first century to the 15th century. We're skipping over, over 14 centuries, all right? So Ptolemy's stuff lasted for a really, really long time. Um, he lived in Europe, so um, it was the Renaissance. Again, y'all know a lot more about this than I do. But uh, Leonardo da Vinci would have been like kind of around the same time, right? And he was a priest, excuse me. And this is the first known heliocentric model that we have where the sun is at the center and the planets all orbit it, okay? So the sun is at the center. I don't know what language this is in, but it says soul and then everything orbits around it, okay? 
it's mathematically simpler, so it makes sense mathematically, but he still doesn't know why, so he doesn't have any proof. And this was such a huge deal by the religious leaders. Like, he was excommunicated from the church. Uh, it, it was a huge deal that he rocked everybody's world with this. Okay, they could not figure out how to make this model where the cell, the earth revolves around the sun. They could not make that work with their, uh, with the church, which is kind of silly. They thought that it uh, completely went against everything that was in the Bible. <clears throat> okay, so that's Copernicus. Then we have Tycho Brahe. Um, he was in the 16th and 17th century. He is one of my people. My family's Norwegian. And um, so he was up from up in Northern Europe, also in the Renaissance. So all of this next stuff, it all happened during the Renaissance. Um, he made very, very meticulous and uh, superfluous observations where he had tons of data. Okay. And he kept it all and he you know, it was very, it was ridiculous. Um, he had this special model where it was a helio, or I'm sorry, geo-heliocentric model. So it was kind of a hybrid model. And I really think that he just didn't want to make any waves. I think he knew that the geocentric model wasn't really working. Um, but he didn't want to rock the boat. So I think that he said that the earth was fixed, the planets orbit the sun, but that the earth is fixed. I can't tell. I don't know which one is which here. But um, but yeah, so he kind of had this hybrid model. That's Tycho Brahe. And then Johannes Kepler, who's also one of my people, um, family is also German, and Gus's middle name is Johannes, and so is, is my dad and my brother. Um, so Kepler, he was also in the 16th, 17th century, same time as Brahe. They actually worked together, and I think Brahe died, well, I know, Brahe died earlier than Kepler, and so Kepler got all of his data together and used it and interpreted it, okay, and analyzed it. So um, he used Brahe's data, and he, he didn't really make a stance about uh, whether it was heliocentric or geocentric. I think he also didn't really want to rock the boat um, because they had all seen what had just happened to Copernicus, right? So, but he did say that, you know, in all these models here, like that and that, they're all perfect circles. He said, no, they didn't, stuff doesn't move in a perfect circle, like the, the planets have to follow elliptical orbits. And he made um, these three laws of planetary motion, which we will use this year. Okay, so that was Johannes Kepler. And then you can kind of see what I have here so far. Whoops. Remember, all of this is going to be on Schoology. <clears throat> I'm sorry. We don't use Schoology anymore because we're science. We use... Google Classroom. Okay, but this is what I have. Okay, no proof, seriously opposed. So Tycho Brahe, he had this geoheliocentric model, and then we have Johannes Kepler. Okay, all right. Next, we're going to talk about Galileo. Um, one of my favorite songs is called Galileo. I'll have to play it for you guys. Um, so, whoops. Galileo. Whenever I hear about Galileo, I think he was like a really long time ago, but he was not. Um, he was in the 16th and 17th century, a little bit later than uh, Brahe and uh, Kepler. He was Italian, like super Italian. Um, uh, I believe... Italy was still part of the Roman Empire. I'm not positive about that, so don't quote me. Um, but he's also from Pisa. And I don't know if y'all have ever been to Pisa, but it's literally like we all know the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Pisa. I believe this is a church. 
Um, it, maybe it used to be a university because it said that he went to the university that was there. But Pisa, there's nothing in Pisa. So it must have been at some time, at some point, like a huge bustling metropolis. But now it's not like people go there to see the tower and take a silly picture and then they leave. Like it's just a tour bus depot. Um, okay. But anyway, so he's from Pisa. He didn't invent the telescope, right? He had heard about it. And just from what he heard, he's like, okay, I think I can figure this out. So he improved upon it and he built his own telescope. He has a lot of accomplishments and we aren't going to talk about all of them because then this would be a class about Galileo. Um, but he is the maybe the first person to observe the moons of Jupiter. Okay. Can you imagine being the first person to see the moons of Jupiter? Um, he also saw that Venus, you know how when we look at the moon, we see phases, right? Like first quarter, uh, second quarter, full moon. Okay. Venus does the same thing. And he was the first person to see that. You can't see it without a telescope. So, um, and those two things were evidence that the sun was in the center of the solar system. Okay. Um, I am going to show you some pictures of that. So here, this is through a telescope. This is Jupiter. And then these are Jupiter's moons. And so he could look through here and you can see them actually orbiting Jupiter. Okay. And this is exactly what it looks like. I've only seen it once, but that's, that's it. So you could see that this is, you could see what's happening. And here is his drawing of Venus and its uh, phases, um, which is pretty awesome. Uh, this, I thought this was a photograph, but somebody built uh, like a software that would um, look and see what Venus looked like at the exact same time, like when he was looking at it in 1610 and 1611. So, um, but man, that's pretty darn close, right? Like, this guy, I have no doubt that he actually saw this and was like, all right, it must be correct. Um, we're going to watch a video real quick showing us uh, how this proves that that it's the, the sun is in the center. So just take a little break from writing, okay? I just want you to watch this video. It is important, so don't skip it.
Okay. Oops. We don't need to watch it again. Okay, so that's how it proves that the Earth revolves around the sun. Everything revolves around the sun. Then we have Isaac Newton. Um, this should say 17th and 18th century. Um, he didn't live for quite that long, y'all. Um, I know that you know about law, his laws of motion. Um, they are based on his theory of universal gravitation. So. He explained why, why we have elliptical orbits. Okay, so um, Kepler is the guy that said that we had elliptical orbits, but then Newton told him why we had elliptical orbits because of gravity. And then he laid the basis for modern physics and astronomy, basically. Okay, so um, his laws of motion and his formulas and stuff kind of proved why things move the way that they do, and it made it so that we can pre predict how things are going to move. Okay, then just as an FYI here, um, this is, you do not have to write this down. I was just, uh, this kind of helps me imagine like when this stuff was. So the 1600s was Shakespeare, right? And the Mayflower was 1640. And then the Industrial Revolution was 1700s, which is when Isaac Newton was. But so the Mayflower was before this, which was kind of interesting. So, um, okay. Now I would like you to summarize. <clears throat> People thought the earth was the center because, and Galileo's observations proved blank because. Now I just want to be very clear that you guys are, like y'all are filling in these blanks, right? You're going to go back and look at your notes. You know, maybe you're going to remember what from that video. Why did people think this? Were they just guessing or being dumb? No. And then how did Galileo prove that that's not what was happening? Okay. All right. Thank you so much. You're the best.